Operating for over 900 years, the McDonald Bear Hotel has stone walls, oak beams, open fireplaces, and a beautiful ivy-covered facade. This 13th century building and coaching inn was a favourite romantic hideaway for Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, who stayed at the Bear on many occasions, favouring the Marlborough Suite. As you can imagine, a hotel with such a historic past may still be home to some ghostly residents who refuse to leave. It seems two different spirits are seen with regularity and have made the bear their home. The first is supposedly the ghost of Elizabeth Downing, a young lady who died in 1768. Local legend suggests that Elizabeth, at the age of 14, did something that brought shame on herself and her family. Consequently, the outraged family took matters into their own hands and bricked her up alive in her room. Her ghost has been seen sobbing uncontrollably, begging her family not to kill her and struggling to be released. She slowly fades away, leaving an eerie silence and sense of dismay in the room. Is she the female presence who haunts the notorious Room 16? In 1967, the actress Maggie Bly, best known for her role as Michael Caine's love interest in The Italian Job, stayed in Room 16 whilst she was filming on location nearby. She woke in the night to hear the distinct sounds of footsteps on the creaking floorboards. Later on, at 2am, she found her dressing table light had inexplicably switched on, despite being nowhere near it. Terrified, the American actress reported this to the hotel staff. She discovered that one of the other crew members only lasted one night in room 16. Manager Dennis Talbot explained that four guests in the previous two years had reported similar unexplained happenings in room 16. Other guests had reported possessions being moved and drawers opening by themselves. The second spirit is that of an eight-year-old young boy named Christopher, whose background is somewhat unclear. It is thought that he might be the illegitimate son of Elizabeth Downing. Perhaps he is, in effect, the apparent shame she brought on her family. Local legend suggests that he was rejected by the family and lived a life on the streets, destitute and forced to fend for himself. Of the two spirits, Christopher is thought to be the most active and he's been seen in the corridors of the hotel, encouraging children who stay to play hide and seek. When Christopher can't be found, the guests realise their playmate had been a ghostly figure all along. Room 12 is also haunted by a workman from the 17th century who either fell or was pushed from the roof. Located in the heart of medieval Lincoln, between the 11th century cathedral and the Norman castle, the White Hart Hotel is steeped in history. King Richard II's symbol was a white heart and he visited in 1387 with his wife, Anne of Bohemia, and the inn was named in his honour. Some say this is Lincoln's most haunted building. The white heart is said to be haunted by at least four ghosts. In the 18th century, Lincoln was an important stopover on the coaching route from London to York Subsequently, the area attracted highwaymen, or gentlemen of the road, who would wait to rob any unsuspecting passengers. Local legend says that a highwayman tried to rob a coach of wealthy passengers in the pitch black night. However, the coach driver was quick to protect his passengers and thrust a flaming torch into the face of the robber, setting him alight. The highwayman later died of his injuries. The stables and courtyard have long since gone and the area is now the location of the hotel's restaurant. 
guests have witnessed the terrifying spectre of the figure, shrouded in dark attire, hiding his face from view, moving quickly through the restaurant before vanishing through a wall. Some believe this is the ghostly highwayman, seeking revenge upon the coachman who killed him and reliving his painful demise. Another spirit haunts the White Hart Inn, a young girl nicknamed the Mobcap Girl, who once worked as a maid at the inn. She caught the attention of a man, often claimed to be the hotel's rat catcher, who desperately fell in love with her. Sadly, she did not feel the same and said no to his romantic advances. In a fit of anger, he murdered her, stabbing her to death on the first floor landing. This is where she has been seen with her wide eyes cowering in the corner, sobbing and still wearing her traditional mob cap and apron. On one bank holiday Monday in the 1960s, a distraught young man arrived and checked into the hotel. Once in his room, he put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. Whilst he doesn't haunt the property as an apparition, staff and guests have heard the disturbing sounds of ghostly sobbing and feel an overwhelming sense of sadness and dread. Guests have witnessed an elderly lady wandering the lower floor corridors. Sometimes she looks lost and people try to help her, but she vanishes. In the same area, people have felt they're being followed and feel a sense of unease. When they look behind them, there's nobody in sight. If you stay in a suite on the third floor of the White Hart Hotel, you might be lucky enough to see the Ginger Jar Man. He moves at speed, dashing about in a 1920s caramel-coloured smoking jacket and cream-coloured silk cravat. Frantically looking for his precious ginger jar that was once stolen, he is thought to be one of the hotel's previous owners. This troubled spirit startles guests with his desperate efforts to be reunited with his treasured belonging before simply vanishing into nothing. With its seemingly violent past, it is not surprising the White Hart Inn is thought to be home to an array of spirit entities. Now named the Ramada Crawley Gatwick, the George has stood as a popular hotel and coaching inn for hundreds of years. Associated with royalty, smuggling and a notorious serial killer, the George has a rich and vibrant history. Located on the main London to Brighton Road and not far from Gatwick Airport, the George has hosted thousands of weary travellers since it opened in 1615. The Prince Regent, who went on to become King George IV, used to stay at the inn whilst travelling back and forth to Brighton to see the construction of the Royal Pavilion. Both Admiral Lord Nelson and Queen Victoria were also notable guests of the George. Another notable patron of the George was the infamous John George Haig, a notable serial killer in the 1940s, who was convicted for killing six people, although there were probably many more, and then dissolving their bodies in sulfuric acid. He stayed at the George on many occasions and even dined there on the day he killed one of his victims. The George has one main spirit who paces the hotel usually at night whilst guests are asleep. A large figure, six foot tall and weighing 18 stone, he's heard making the floorboards creak whenever he is busy wandering the corridors. The local myth is that he was Mark Houston, a night watchman from the 1600s, possibly from a time when the inn originally opened. Armed with both a pistol and a sword, he would be a formidable figure for any would-be robber or smuggler, hoping to take advantage of the hotel's guests. He did much to earn the George the reputation of being a safe stopover point. One night, a paranoid guest thought somebody was entering his room without permission and stealing his precious wine and food. In order to ensure that the thief received a suitable punishment, he added some poison to the wine and placed it next to his bed. The following day, the guest checked out, leaving the deadly wine in the room. 
a perk of Mark Houston's job was that he was allowed to eat and drink any leftovers from when guests departed. Spotting the bottle of wine in the room, he drank the lot. The next day, he was found dead in a small cubby hole in the area near the present-day function room. People have reported hearing Mark Houston pacing the corridors, maintaining his role as a night watchman. Guests feel uneasy, and some claim to see a dark, shapeless figure in the area where his lifeless body was found. Could it be that he doesn't want to leave the inn he worked so hard in life to protect? <laughs> 